This episode is brought to you by TwoLinedMusicCutStore.com TwoLinedMusicCutStore.com is your all access to culture. Check out cultural merchandise like leggings, hats, mini boxing gloves and bags. Also t-shirts like hip-hop, nature, rock bands, reggae and dark fantasy. Fast shipping worldwide. That's TwoLinedMusicCutStore.com Now let's check out this episode. Welcome back, Esco, to the program. Last time we were talking, we stopped right at where you're telling me you guys were about to come to Canada, and Noel himself was convincing you guys about the show. So let's continue from there, because we got a lot of ground to cover tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big up to all the listeners again. We are again, fam. I mean, this, the story is um, surprisingly long for even me. So, I mean, let's get into it. I know we took a while, and we got through a lot of stuff. But, um, yeah, yeah. Um, the Canada situation, bro, as I told you, you know, that was a whole situation that was supposed to benefit um, left side bread at the same time. So upon realized that was your show and upon realizing that, OK, we're supposed to be doing the show. Noel was having some difficulty convincing his brother. So I tried to convince him at a certain point, which um, not to divulge too much, but he even offered me like, yo, is that he'll give me some money. You know what I mean? In other words, we're not going to do that show there. <laughs> So I was like, yeah, bro, okay, I mean, it's not even about me, bro, I'm supposed to eat something too, you know what I mean? So he just didn't like the idea of the show and because he had collected, you know, some money recently off publishing and just wasn't trying to lift up. And I mean, I do understand trying to improve your price, but we hadn't been to Canada yet. There were going to be multiple shows after your show. Um, we had an opportunity to produce songs, work with artists on the ground, you know, ingratiate with a lot of people and, you know, and... It just didn't happen, and how it didn't happen was one of the reasons that led to even more um, disturbance in the group flow. Because at the end of the day, I finally convinced him, like, yo, bro, you know, your bro supposed to eat that food. And, you know what I'm saying? Not because you have a money, bro, you know what I mean? That money would serve me good, too, you know what I'm saying? To be honest with him, and I want to say this to you, you know what I mean? On this podcast, I don't want f- nobody feel like me I beat anybody or I'm caught up on history. For sure. Left side is a very fair man when it comes to money. We've been, you know what I mean? We're kind to one another, right? True. We've never had money issues. We've never had mean people issues or nobody, you know what I mean? Doing anything that's less than caring or considerate for one another. You see I me? Mean? I want that to be clear. But, uh, you know, I mean, sh- shit happens, bro. You know what I'm saying? People do things at different times. So, eventually, I con- convinced him. And we were to go to the embassy in the morning. And he claimed he had w- he-, he was working. You know what I'm saying? And when I did the research, he was up in a club. You know what I mean? So, I went. We were calling in the morning for the interview. He missed the first time. I went to his house personally, woke him up. I think I even took his passport. And he was like, yo, he's working and stuff like that. And, and then we went, we rescheduled an interview to try and catch the visa the same day. And him still never make it. So we ended up, you know, not making the timeline to make the trip. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that really got me pissed off because at the same time, it's like, a business too and I mean even if in, there's a lot of shows we go on and we don't get fully paid there's a lot of shows we go on you know what I mean where things no guarantee you know what I, mean? I said but you make the trad when you did early when you're hungry when you felt like yo you wanted to get out there and when you you know what I mean and I mean okay we were established to a point but we hadn't been to Canada mm-hmm. you know what I mean plus your brother have to eat a food plus we were prolific enough if we can eat our own food on the ground anywhere we land, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I, I was a little bit disturbed about that. And I took I called him and I was upset and I was like, bro, not because you make a bag of money what they have from you can't just keep, you know, downplaying the smaller food than where we for eat from or whatever the case may be. And it's like, you know, I've been noticing this trend, like since you collect publishing food, it's like no more singing of free dubs, no more dub for nobody, not with less promotional dub. It's like you know, and I do understand trying to make yourself more exclusive, but it was it wasn't that. You know, what I say it wasn't that. It was just more like, yo, me I do what I feel like now because me, me can wake up to a bank account, and with that, I don't really have an answer to anybody. You know, so he didn't like when I approached him. Of course, he hung up the phone, 
and then he called back and he was you know screaming or oh, he was working and he has to be putting in work i mean it was con- it was a little bit what you call that redundant or contradicting because at the end of the day okay you're working and you're putting in work to make things happen but then on a new ground like canada where we hadn't been you know you don't think we need to go there and put in some work from you know so it's like i was like bro we're putting enough work in the quad in the club you know what i'm saying so uh, what kind of style that and we also spoke the day before and told you that the interview was a day so it's like i feel like it's just because you generally don't want to do the show and then him confessed him was like yo i really don't want to do the show dog i mean i want to go i'm gonna care if no one for make no money or uh, whatever dog is a shaky link and is it you know, whatever whatever i don't even want to go into what does him say about him, him bro at the time you know what i said but him just wasn't siding with him bro in in that way you know what i mean and he was talking a lot of personal things to say those were the reasons why he doesn't owe him to do that mm-hmm. you get me i said and i mean he wasn't wrong either you know what i mean but you don't use people's in that moment you don't use people's personal transgressions as well as you know his brother was in a bad time at that, at that moment we all knew there was things going on in his life and he kind of needed it regardless of if he's a if he did wrong or in the situation whatever our bro that he need a strength we should have you know anyway him disagree and we had that big you know we had a big fallout there and you know people just thought he must be selfish at the time and whatever whatever so from there um we had a sort of meeting to kind of squash that over but it never really squash over you know what i'm saying and okay then there were other people around that started to tell me things you know what i mean i didn't call their name but they would be like yo you know when you guys got your last money and you rented a place he's saying you didn't help him to do this or you didn't help him to do that and you know what i'm saying and and from at the time i had a child and a, and, a, and a woman you know what i mean so my responsibilities and how i chose to live my life was different mm-hmm. you know what i mean I, I i don't mind going to the club fam but i thought we spent a lot of time in the club i thought we spent a lot of time doing different things that you know i had a dot and you know in a in an artistry music and you know, i get to spend a lot of time with your picnics at them time then my, my my girl at the time and my baby was living with me so when we really never had nothing pressed into the farm the studio was always at, at my house as well so it's like okay. the studio is there and my family is there and we're not really do not know the road the song them at is like okay we're not promoting anything new so you know i i, I chose to stay home more often but that eventually became a problem too and i heard that you know i'm I'm staying home too much and I don't want to go on the road and me, you know, me lucky with my woman too much and this and that and me I go on like my baby and my Ray special and him out and him nasty feet baby and you know but those are choices you make. Mm-hmm. You understand me G? So um, and just through that it was just gingerly you know what I mean and people started bringing up things that people did in the past and you know what I mean people would it, come it was in. just it just kept escalating more and more and more it's like it, it's not even escalating yeah. is not the right word bro it was just fake mm-hmm. while we're being gingerly fam is like we're doing music and then there you know there was um drunken dance which i produced for future fambo mm-hmm. and you know when we produced it, it he had a studio run by his house secretly mm-hmm. and you know so he wasn't really coming by our core studio that we had before as much so i just did future want to do this song to try and get him thing back at so you know at them time that he was doing most of the beats and stuff so at this time you know i was like yo you know this is my opportunity for kind of try improve myself you know since you know things aren't 100 percent esco is really time for you for you know flex your muscle and make sure so you, you, you know you, you, you're self-sufficient so that was actually my first chance at producing something with like an artist without nobody there and other influence are more talented people so i produced that for, for fumble and okay. i asked left i asked left side to play a phrase mm-hmm. and he played on a phrase and it and stuff so we're still good we're still doing musical stuff together trying to keep it together and then um we got some licensing money for that song and we gave fumble some of the money mm-hmm. and he and i took an equal share so there was much money left so i said to left side let's use our money mm-hmm. and just put to the video he agreed we put the money into the video boom we we'll keep the video you know what i mean 
respectfully they came through we didn't it was like a hangout like all of us was there it's like i was coordinating the video and directing and they just came on like cameo stars mm-hmm. zin that the, the, you know they came and we all vibe out in the video the video came out and then after that homeboy told, was walking and telling everybody that i didn't give him any money and he didn't make any money off of that and you know what i'm saying it's like and i'm like bro but it's a good song you know that we got the licensing money you know what we did with it you know say fambo spent half fee more i don't know if maybe you feel like i'm here and fambo them did over there and spent it half or what got you. but you know what i'm saying so it just got to a point where it seemed like at this point people were just looking for reasons to accuse because if it wasn't that i wasn't going out enough mm-hmm. it was um we never give no, we never give him the money off of the junkie dance which is a total life i mean and at the end of the day it was only 500 us mg like i took 500 i took 500 and future took the rest out of like maybe four thousand dollar or five thousand dollar we got for the single you get massive mg so it's like it wasn't even no great deal of money neither yeah yeah you know? so it's like i don't even understand how that came about but to me uh, you know i know him and i'm a bridging uh, from long time it, it, him probably was just going through a lot of confusion and just wanted things to to, to pick at you know what i say because him know him get them him know what we do and i know i'm honest with money so it's like and he's been honest with money so if me tell you say we're gonna use the money and shoot the video and you saw me there working like a slave on behalf of another artist when i'm an artist i mean why would i you know what i'm saying bro it was all about the greater good but sometimes people get that misconstrued you know <clears throat> so anyway i made an error <clears throat> which is we had a project at the time and it was halfway out, but we were still loading songs on it. And I was trying to back up our files and I lost the juggling. Mm. See? Yeah. So, I mean, I take full responsibility for that. And you don't know, I mean, I'm sure every producer, every engineer, every person mm. in music has fucked up files before. Mm-hmm. But you know, the dog took a serious exception to that and he was like extra pissed and like, yo, you know, you fuck up the thing. And you know, what I mean, as I said to you, bro, it was just a frustrating time and I feel like everything was just a reason for a man to use and say, yo, you know what? I don't need to be answering to you guys no more. I'm not, you know, I'm not obligated to you guys anymore. You know what I'm saying? And I'm making more money now. And I like, I, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you got, it's like you're almost holding me back. Then it's almost like a, that, the energy he was trying to push off. Like, so yo, he's, yeah, he's, he was ready to go at this time, but he probably he didn't know how to articulate. So you know what? I'm ready to go on my own right now. So to be fair, he did take some time and we did t- take some time. And then we had another phone call and he was like, yo, you know, bro, I feel like you probably need to do your own thing too. Cause like maybe the way I'm doing my thing, is not necessarily conducive to the level that you're on and what you're trying to do and the the work that you want to do and i want to do my thing a certain way and you want to do a certain thing a certain way mm-hmm. so you know what i mean and then so he was like yo let's be like dave kelly and tony kelly you know what i said bro which is like let's kind of hold a vibe same way but there's no say we are doing things separately and so forth you know what i mean okay and i was like yeah, bro, you know what? I actually appreciate you even saying that and looking at it that way, you know what I mean? I don't mind, I don't have no problem with that and thing and thing, you know what I'm saying? And then, um, like, we started doing that and, you know, every song that you do is a hypocrite. People go and say, it was directed at this man. You know, every t- song him say about, you know, he did a video where it was like it was some Spartan or something with him shirt off and him kick a man into the hole and like the whole place around me don't I say I mean kicking at the wall. Right. I'm like, yo bro <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I'm like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? So it's like that started to happen now from where it's like when you are trying to keep up with the road and I do provocative song, gun song or you do certain songs that is topics of the street. Yeah. People are saying, oh, Demi, I throw a word off. You know what I'm saying? And what year would you say the group officially split? I don't even remember if I was at 08. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Yeah. You yeah know? That would make sense within that region there. Yeah. So, anyway, it's like that happened. And then it's like, I guess somebody, the same things people were telling me, I guess the same people, things were telling him, yo. And you him do that song there for 
And Rian Tesa, one day, man, in brother called me and I said, Yo, dog, if you're going to sing them things, you know, your lyrics and Rian Tesa. And I was like, Sing what, fam? Mm -hmm. Sing what, brother? You know, I mean, come on. We still, you know, said Dave Kelly and Tony Kelly. So why would you hear us? Why would you hear me and sing the lyrics? Have I said anything about left side or did I have, like, come on, dog, you know, we're all lyricists. If we want to say something, that us come out and say yeah. it. But they thought I was, you know, whatever, doing that, doing that. And I mean, I will even say this. Because friends used to say to me, I said, bro, I know you're not doing it consciously, but what if subconsciously those things were coming out? Hmm, that's fair enough. Yeah, because my mama part be a real nigga, you know, my G, so. Hmm. And I was like, yeah, you know what, probably I can hear the lyrics and, you know, even as I'm on the right lyrics, I can be like, oh, shit, yeah, shit. When I listen it now, people might think that. But at the time, I didn't care, fam. Because at the end of the day, I knew I didn't mean it that way. I wasn't doing it. I was doing a provocative song. And, and every artist can attest to this, fam. If you use the situations to try and grow from it. You know, you, you turn negatives into positive, especially in a dance hall. For sure. So at that time, I was like, all right, well, if people feel like me, I talk against someone or whatever. I didn't call his name or I didn't say anything derogatory. I mean, never this no man tell the man, say, run up and go chuck up under this. Uh. So, I mean, if that's going to bring an added shine to the thing, then whatever. So I just didn't change the lyrics when I thought. When, like, friends would say, dog, people are going to think I hear me attack. You know what I mean? And when people would be like, yo, are you him kick off into the hole? And are you him attacking that song? They'd be like, yo, fam, come on, brother. It's not even that bad. You know what I mean? I said, dog, like, me and the man, we, we still talk. You know what I mean? call the man, we can shout him. He can shout me. We've we never been at a point where a man feel like said, me can't shout him. Or me can't text. You know what I'm saying? It's never been that way, to be honest with you, between me and the dog. Regardless of what's said in our media, Ray or whatever, it's never been a, something where something important needs to happen and a man feel like him can't email or DM or text or, you understand? Because you guys are still connected in business, the previous work you did, so there still has to be some form of communication open between the two of you guys. It doesn't have to be every day, but it has to be, I could get to you when I need you, you could get to me when you need me. Sure, fam, and I'm telling you, it's, it's even deeper than that, bro. Like, I have deep respect for his dad, his mom, his sisters. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know them. We all cool. My mom and him is still cool if they see each other. Oh, you know what I'm saying? It's never that dog. It's like, you know, people need to understand situations too. And even so, it's like rough situations between friends. It's not, it's it, no, it not, it, and I'm not, I'm not dance man thing, dog. Mm -hmm. I know, you see me? I know, no man, when I know them talent or them greatness and I understand elders and where we forward in from and respect and them thing there you understand mm -hmm. like even even a, a couple of days before you link me somebody i, I link me upon an interview and i ask me some old questions and I try to get me to dig up some dirt i mean i tell a man say dog listen mm -hmm. when i drop no dirt or no secret upon the man or no nothing or what you hear me no know yeah what happened between me and the person me know but you understand and i'll always talk about that i'm not put my mouth at ground and talk but you know, so we we still we, we not do that something there, bro. And if we see the man too, is love and respect cause we we'll never underrate the journey to you. Know? Regardless if we don't talk or wanna take tea or whatever it is, bro. For sure. It's never gonna get that bad. And especially for me to you see. And which artists did you start now that you got in your separate ways, which artists were you working with at this time here when you started to venture out? All right, well, as I was saying, I, it's weird, fam, because I was working, we were working with the same people. Because mm -hmm. it was the people who were working, were mutually working with, let me know that there is a whole other studio where they're working at. <laughs> 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 so, you know what I mean? We're working with pretty much the same people, fam. You know what I mean? I, I want to even say, you know, big up to all the artists that we're working with and all the artists that we strengthen and strengthen us because no man never really picked us side. Mm. I don't, I can't say there was some man with me link and a man said, oh dog, you don't know where you are. And I didn't tell any man, say, dog, don't vice for the man. Or you could, it's not like you have to come on my studio and not talk about him. Or that, you know what I'm saying, fam? It was not Gully Gaza. <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely nothing like that, my brother. So, you know, we're still kind of working with the same artists and stuff. Um, but, you know, like Marshall, Wayne Marshall is somebody who I have to send crazy big ups to and love to. Because also at the time we had a European tour, bro, with eight shows. Mm -hmm. And because of the breakup and the situation and the split at the time, 
Um, you know, left side made up a story and said that he had to promote his album and couldn't fulfill the tour dates. And we had already collected some, you're not really, well, I hadn't collected the deposit, but the lady in Jamaica who was going to run the tour had already taken the money. <laughs> and I had gone ahead and signed my name on the contract because I had spoken to him and we were going to do it. So at that time, to fulfill those obligations, Marshall had to come on the road with me and take less money and fulfill those tour dates. And we did Italy and a few more countries and then we went down to Ghana and in Nigeria and stuff like that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? A man can come feel like he want to talk film side too if he want to after all this time, bro. This is just a podcast made for you, Muscle. Especially the reason the fans for know why me even I do this for you, Muscle. <laughs> Is because your show was one of the one of the last shows do um we were supposed to embark on doing the breakup and you directly fall into the history, my G. Otherwise, we wouldn't take up any other podcast, man, and go back into the whole of them history. You see me, my G? It's just things are when things are supposed to connect, they just connect. When the stars are supposed to lie. Because the funny thing with it, I was contemplating. Am I going to tell Esco about that show? And something brother, that, if you never you know, tell me about the show, yeah. who does the podcast and I'm a brother? Mm-hmm. Something said, you know what? Just tell him about the show. You yeah, know? because I don't make it a habit to kind of go on interviews and talk, mm-hmm. back talk or, or live on the past, bro. I bring the best parts of the past forward mm-hmm. and leave the rest laid to rest. You know what I mean? I my brother, so it's just because I'm under the whole situation, so People should understand that it's like kill the kill all that noise about yo um who did this, who did that, who was better, who's better now, who's re it's a unfortunate situation between friends and we're reconciling and building on our lives, moving forward as big men that have to know have to honor this path that we're on and still carry on on separate paths for sure some me look on it my g mm-hmm. people are the ones who keep trying to say yo what me here said this or me here's the man said that or yo the man i drive this and oh you drive that or yo we are there and i'm, I'm like from it don't matter it's like congratulations and the man and the, the dog talented and him i got hard and it's raised you said, bro it's like that's the movement i tried to stay on mm-hmm. people around me still work with the other artists i encourage them i never discourage anybody any man woman or child to say yo don't link the dog we, we have mutual friends same way bro you get me i said the dog text me when time people need me when we need to sign off and stuff if people looking for him i'll text him and tell him geez you understand what i said bro for sure so it's really it's like continuing on this podcast and before we even shift into our next gear we just want people to understand say the reason we've also divulged so much it's cause muscle <laughs> is directly involved in the history. And you know what I'm saying? And I was really pissed about not being able to go to Canada at such an early stage in my life. Matter of fact, fam, I have never actually been to Canada You've from never that been point up here. on. No, nah, because at, at that point I was just like there was so much things that happened with me after that, fam. Mm-hmm. So much things that happened with me after that. Like I just, you know, I went on so many different paths. It was rough for me and I just I'm just back now more resilient and stronger than ever, my brother. Good. Crazy because you say a name you brought up was Alliance. This is when you're working with the Alliance. Where were you when everything started to go left with everybody now with Cartel, Bounty, Mofado, and every where did that leave you now as a producer? Right in the middle, bro. Mm-hmm. Still remaining true to who I am. Who won't stop working with me because me I stay true, them stop. But them still have to start back. Cause you stay true, you're gonna be true. And when a man go through what them I got through and realize who is true, everything come right back true. For sure. So at that time, I was, you know, and you know, solar thing and ray ray t- So it's like I was just kind of just being open to everybody. At that time, I was still, you know, I still get sung from Cartel, you know what I mean? We never get a song from Vada still. Mm-hmm. But, we, you know, we, we still link up. It's just timing never connect. No man never there all now. Then. So at the time of the Alliance, I was right in the midway, bro. And, I was, you know what I mean? At the same time, 
I saw what was necessary. I saw what people were trying to do. It's just that people were just doing it the wrong way. Mm. You understand? Because remember, I was there for the Alliance song. I was there for the Alliance Cure Them song. You know what I'm saying? It's like my visit Carter's studio after him and killer them kick off me, hear the talk them. You know what I mean? It's like with daddy. I mean, I also see that man and man they still always have mutual respect. So at the same time, I, I kind of just realized that it's a path people was choosing in in, in in terms of their business and their brand. Mm -hmm. But right now, the Mig Light man, it started when, um, you know, in my opinion, it started when, of course, you know, with this episode, whereas I feel like, you know, Cartel was asking Killer for some strength on something and get the wrong reaction. And it was in front of people. And, you know, from there, I just, you know, you pick up a different demeanor and how he was moving and viewing the whole situation. And, you know, to be fair at the time, you know what I mean? As I say, everybody may know them too, and you know what I mean? This is history. It is what it is. I just feel, I feel like even the general himself has grown from that point and understands it. You know, your son's going to grow up to be kings, and at some point you have to go decipher how you're going to treat your son now that he's a king. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I feel at that time, the G himself was just learning to be a prolific leader and godfather of music. You know, I, I feel like Killa himself has evolved so much now, even working with him on his current album. It's a different individual overall. You know? And he's, he's a person where, he's, I don't know, it's amazing to see how this man from the ghetto evolved to be, you know, this kind of rounded person. But <clears throat> them time, they never surrounded, and I feel like that did go on. And from there, you know, like, Cartel and I'm bling them start rolling more and them try farm a little thing named Tri State. And there was nothing wrong with that, but at the same time, you know, as I said, killer them not really understanding leadership and transit and transition. You know, it was supposed to be one alliance and bop, 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 you know what I mean? And then <clears throat> also there was people who killer was trying to have you under one umbrella who wasn't necessarily taking tea. You know what I mean? I said, I don't know them and cartel them never really into busy. At the time, man, you know, because of that whole situation, killer them there forced the unity. And, <clears throat> you know, as I said, nobody was really given any preferential treatment or any respect for the kings that they were becoming. And those things just kind of chipped away at the relationship. If, if I was to speak from an educational man's standpoint and a man with it from the sideline, mm -hmm. I would just say those things chipped away at the respect. I would, I would say every man love and respect each other for what happened from day one and everybody knows everybody bad but you know those things chipped away at the situation and also man a man they want to be the more man too you know mm -hmm. so i was right in the big light farm it was unfortunate you know what i mean but it, it, it also it, a powerhouse team like that could have stayed together my G. it would have been too monopolizing for dancer listen you see even though some of those fully loaded and stuff i'm not sure if they this was yeah this was when you guys were artists you see when alliance comes on stage that's the end of the show bro you either get in your little piece while you can because once alliance yeah. comes off that's yeah. the end of that when alliance yeah, yeah. gets to build it boss and it was a beautiful thing to see though you know as we said um you know we here in dance uh, we create so many brilliant trends and brilliant movements and sometimes them too brilliant for even our minds to manage we need like a structure you know and that's just what that's just that and i just hope our structure and dance can grow because those kind of vibe and that, that that aura and energy that that was created through that kind of vibe it, it, it's priceless and it's what help elevates our genre and I mean, on this King of King of Kingston album we're working out with Killer, there's a lot of that though. So, all right. You know, well, I mean, well, one thing we can say is that the alliance is it, up. It, the intention was pure; is to unify music. We're about to get into thing there just now, the King of Kingston. But there's a couple stuff I want to get into before we even get there. So, when did you actually officially form Starstruck Records? <clears throat> all right, man. So you know, after I did the whole split thing. Um, I I had an unfortunate accident or an incident mm -hmm. on the um on a plaza in Kansas Spring 
altercation with some guys and stuff. I was trying, they, they tried to drag me into a car. You know what I mean? I, was, I got hit with a gun, for, you know, it was four of them and I was fighting back and I got hit with a gun over my left eye, seven stitches and stuff. And it was like, it was a tricky time, bro. Mm-hmm. Cause you know, you have to find out what go on and, you know, and through the final process, it's like your family has a dog, you know, if you have follow up this, I follow up that. So long story short, I went to foreign, bro. Uh, so I had to leave after, you know, after, you know, because shit kind of got rough for me now, bro. Even though I held it up for a little while, you know, the early after the group, it got a little rough. And then that happened. And my family was like, yo, you need for this kind of breeze, Jamaica for a little bit with the group split and this attack situation and stuff like that. And, mm-hmm. <clears throat> so you know me never bother follow it up too much I'ma just leave, you know? And I left and I was over there and I you know I, I, I really spent an intense year and a half improving, self-improving, bro. You know what I mean? And I encourage every producer, every artist, you know what I mean, regardless of what you're going through, regardless of what stage you're at in your career, dog, just keep self-improving and believe in yourself. Man. Don't lie to yourself, but keep improving and bettering your skills. Once you hit them one time, you can hit them again, fam, especially if you improve. Mm-hmm. You see me? So I went away from and I hit rock bottom for a time. Why? I hit the, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, I, I really hit the all time low. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I actually. Because it was a state to you. What part of the state did you end up in? I went to Florida from and I was in such a bad place and I was also in a little bit of fear because I couldn't know where the attack was coming from. Mm-hmm. So I actually. <laughs> People don't know this, but I actually changed my image. And while I was doing a course to, to upgrade my music skills, I actually took a job in a call center. Wow. Yeah, I cut all my hair off, took out earrings and everything, changed my hair color to blonde, and just took a different identity from, I went from Esco to being Matt Thompson. Yeah. You know what I mean? And... I did that for a while and stuff, and then out of the blue, Bounty Killer called me. He was up for a best of the best. He was in Miami for a best of the best, and he called Sister Marcia Ausphone. Because <laughs> I was staying with Sister Marcia at the time, Marcia Griffiths, you know, big up all the time, my stepmother, that, you know, whenever I'm not with my mother, she, you know, me can go right off your foot. Mm-hmm. So he called me and he was like, yo, what kind of runway are you running from Jamaica, man? I'm here, like, you live a far, you know, one thing, one thing. And I said, no, I know my gym. It's a breeze out and a cool out. The man said, what kind of breeze out, man? What kind of breeze better than island breeze? You need to come back to your yard, man. <laughs> you need to come back to your yard, man. And what happened? Now, what going on? What you need? Strength you need? What you need? What happened? The, listen, just come back in, man. And, you know, and we set back the thing, man. The music, them need them, man. What you need to do? Just anything you need to do. Any side of the music, some side of the music need it. You need to come back in. <laughs> So I'm pack my bag and say, I come back in, come do some work for about three weeks, fam, and I never returned to foreign from there. So when I got back now, of course, I was staying at Sister Mass house in foreign, so she was away. So when I came down and thing, you know what I mean? Because I was looking to get right back into studio work and stuff, and my, my brothers and I came down. Mm-hmm. Um, we just decided to build a studio in the back of her house. So that she could use it personally when she come down and that we could get started right away, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So my brother built a studio and I started working there and you know I mean the momentum to start build back, let's go back in Jamaica, so forth and so on. Momentum start build back and I linked up with Delmar Drum and that's Della from Danger Zone mm-hmm. and they were doing some different stuff now and so you know he and I collaborated and we started Starstruck based off on a show that um I did with Popcorn. So when I came back from foreign now, big up to Poppy. Anyway, I'm there. I don't even know if he remembers that same, same, that Esco, yeah, him do the show for. When him see me in the street, he never give me a respect and love still, but him mm-hmm. don't even understand why I respect and love him and rate him as a youth, because as a young, as a producer and an artist, where you know, and him know me and think I'm see me around teacher, when I come back, I'm never there on my best foot. I link Carleen, and Carleen shout him and tell him, say, Esco, I tried to a show. So me and Della's idea was to launch the label via a show, start a show series, mm-hmm. and then hopefully that would promote the name and then build that into a music label and then record the artists that we work with on the show series. Mm-hmm. So Popcorn was the first artist me approach me, G, and you know, the G took a heavy sum of money off him, off him price, though. See? I roll out way out of 
Which part will keep the show? I believe a man devil will keep the show, my G. Mm -hmm. And the dog go off in price and drive clear out a girl devil for it. And rainfall, brother. Mm -hmm. First shot, half a me, the, a flip some money, I come back from foreign. Mm -hmm. Rainfall, my brother. And believe it or not, the, the DJ still come sing for one hour. All I'm crony them, friends, family, them just eat some food, them all a vibe. You know what I say? And it's like the dog they never even ask me for no food, no money to go back in. Them no, you see me the man in the said, all the other best go. That's all. I don't even know if the DJ member said that him said to me. That was one thing the man said to me after him healed me up and what did they attack when he might leave him they said, all the other best go. And him cut. And to this day, dog, I just look at him and say, yo, me not, I don't even know I even get a song from the man there. Mm -hmm. Just the situation there. You see me where the dog reach out and show me the strength there. And just that word there. After. You see me? Him as a man with hot and him say I try a thing and your thing not really work. And you know, you, you, you sang them not really hot again. And you build up back your thing and him say you take a defeat. And him still him give the biggest strength. And him never him ask him for no money. And when him left him and say, dog, hold up here. Me didn't say, you understand? Because we know you and we still, your thing still ready, dog. Keep at it, is it? So from there to now, bro, we decided to say, all right, with what, with what Papi said to him, I say, oh, hold up your head, dog. We said, all right, then here what then? We're we'll probably we'll not going to more show right now. We had just flick it into the label the same way. Mm -hmm. So we started Starstruck from there, and you know what I mean? At them time there, I saw Bling Dog down a penthouse, and Bling did a try. You know, get him thing on a level, and want some people to work with him personally. So we formed the whole movement, and... Took a time and developed something, and that's how Creech them come in. You know what I mean? So I, I'm actually the producer and co-writer of Creech. So Junkin Dance and Creech are two ways you never know about my bro. <laughs> that you yeah. directly had your hand in. Yes, direct. Mm -hmm. So journey? with the now, Creech was a situation where Bling Dog and I used to go out in the streets and I saw a creature walking at a party. Yeah. And the crowd effect was just crazy, you know what I mean? That's how we scout music more. The crowd effect was crazy, so we decided to link him to come to the studio for the dance and stuff. And mm -hmm. we did that, and that went down in history, you know what I mean? It was a good, that song that really, at the time, there was no dancing song from. This was right before Ding Dong them dropped Siva. Okay. You know what I mean? And this is actually the second dancing song we may have produced now that would have bang back to back because a junkie dance was pretty good, you know? So it's like, Creech you now, I realized, say, you know, I had a the beat before. Actually, I had a song on the beat myself. Okay. And when Blink came with, it was like, yo, I want to do this idea for a dance, man. But he, he had suggested that we do something with hip hop influence. I already had the beat, so then I was just listening to some of the beats that I already had, and I listened to that one, I was like, yo, you know what, I'm take my song off it, and I started to vibe it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And at the time, you know, I'm a big Nas fan, because Nas, my name myself half of me tell you. Mm -hmm. So at the time, Nas then did have, there was a song out from Nas, it was out a little while still, but there was um, um, a song out called, They Shoot It. They shoot. Ah, oh, made you look. Mm -hmm. Made from a rap book, the Nasdaq. And in the Nasdaq, my chant. Brave heart. Brave heart. You know what I say? Mm -hmm. I'm used to listen to that. You know, I'm listening to the dog thing hard to me. I say, yo, you know what? This dancing song, I wonder if we can get something like that, like a chanty thing. You know what I say? Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to jump on the rhythm and I say, yo, you know the dog name, Creed. So I say, yo, Creed. Rage, rage. Natural writer's rhyme. We rage, cause when we see him, they just reach at the party. You get me, I say? So I said, Bumba Clam, I find it now. So the car bling me, I said, bling me have the chorus and I come in, I could eat it and things. So bling Papa and now and him say, I say, yo dog, listen, I don't care what you have. The song I have to start with this. Mr. Mm -hmm. Walk is if he zip it up the whole world, cause zip it time. I said, Bogle, look on him and say. When him just a bus, Bogle said to him, say, you have to have a dance. Mm -hmm. And he must say, yo, hold this. And him, they say, must say, yo, 
him build a line and say, Mr. Waki said to zip it up, the whole world goes zip it. So it's like he must say, in tribute to Bogle, because Bogle gave him his first dancing song. He must say, no matter what we do, it have to start with that. So Mr. Waki said, it have to start with it. He must say, Mr. Waki said to zip it up, the whole world goes zip it. We just say, new dance name, creature, one, the whole world go prep it. Mm, if you know for the already rock it and dip it, move your shoulders, swaggerific, because you don't know. Mr. G, they did that word with something named swaggerific. Swaggerific was yes. the word at the time, swagging and swag. Move your shoulders, swaggerific, everybody. Great. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to jump in with the chanting. And I saw it built generically, bro. And then from this, I know Starstruck started to get a little vibe on a roll in the streets. And then Bling and the management had differences. Um, myself and the management, we I want management and team, bro. That's that, that's always been my thing. You get me? I didn't want to spit off from them. So I took myself on with the management. Mm-hmm. And Bling didn't want to run with the management. And because of that, you know, it just ended up being a situation where him, him and the man in media work with never good. So it's like he it wouldn't come to that studio there anymore. And it just got more distance. Until you know what I mean, him and creature them end up in having a small fallout and it was just getting all the original vibes just get messed up mess up, bro. And I just continue to move on from there. I would just know say. You know, that and that I would just move on as big man. Considering say <laughs> we already learned say that's a definite part of the thing. There comes a time when big man does have to move on, you know. You just gotta keep it moving. Another situation that you were involved with, this is what I really want the people them to hear. How did you guys come up with Legendary, Bounty, and Beanie? How did that song come together? Because where were where was Bounty and Beanie in their situation at that time? Did Bruh. they just link back or what happened there? But gee, you know, I'm glad you asked a question, fam. Mm-hmm. So, I really want the fans to know this now. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> when Killer called me, and Killer called me, this is what, about 2010? Mm-hmm. 2011, maybe. And from them time there, when him call and tell me, say, yo, what you need? Strength, anything you need? Come in. We will do it. Remember me, Sister Master live beside Beanie Man. Me and, me and Beanie Man, them good from morning, from day one. Mm-hmm. I'm not politically affiliated. So when I was coming back now, I was like, all right, how can I come in back with that? Bang. Mm-hmm. So before me even reached them, um, you know, we learn for new some new technology of foreign, build some new beat. I'm a demo down piece of the song, bro. I'ma come in with the song. I wanna just reach a Jamaica kill and be never good. Know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Never good fam. So I had to wait. Couple of years after me there, Jamaica now, I come back, you don't know me and killer them are all the same way. Mm-hmm. But, but Beanie them still live next door. So Beanie started to do more music with me now, because with their side next door, Sister Marcy and thing and thing, and I start linking now, and you know, go over film, yeah, the film studio, and just sit in on sessions and watch them work as a great, and all voice, and throw in some lines to and you know, because as a joy, if you know, say the big artist, them, so you test yourself as a writer, you throw a line to big artists, and when them take the line, then you realize, all right, the line them at work. Mm-hmm. You don't trick yourself and go right, right, this baga baga thing and tell yourself, say, yo, Ray, you know what I mean? Run it by some greats to man and, 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 and don't skip steps. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, you know, that's how I actually got my first, in, continue to build my confidence in writing. Anyway, a couple years after that, now, them, them look like them good now. So, I approach Beanie with the idea. Beanie asked me to talk to Killer. Talk to Killer. Killer said I'm willing for you, but he's not ready for it yet. Mm-hmm. Boom, you know, it, it go back and forth, it go back and forth a little bit, because them kind of get good, then them kind of go back oriente, you know what I say? Finally now, there comes a moment when both man see Sister Marcia. So, you know, you know, it go when mama in the building is like, you know, it's a different kind of free. So, mm-hmm. mama said, Oh, man, you know, come over to the house, man. We are in the for me. live next door. You need to come check me. So, you know, that, you know, that killer them know, say, I right, to up a sister, man, say, it's a different level of, you know, respect and thing and the world settings and thing now. So, him finally give me a one link up at the studio, see where we're at and so forth and thing. And, you know, we play the demo fee, man. 
him decides to write him like it and him want to fix it, theme part them, you know, I touch up theme part them to it and thing. And so it, I had the song actually maybe four years or four and a half years before it was able to be done, bro. And when it was done, it was like <clears throat> long after things changed, sometimes the sound of music kind of changed a little bit. But you know, we're still like, we're still just a shoot, we shot the same way. I mean, a song of such magnitude, when the artist them ready for do it, you have to just do it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I had it four years before, and then the night when we did it, bro, people might say, all right, then, so why would it do? <clears throat> you guys never go back to the drawing board and see how you could array the night when it do. We had to give the artists a, a cut mm-hmm. for them to listen, and they went to a Monday event, and it was over after that. Mm, okay. It wasn't supposed to be leaked. It wasn't supposed to be played. But you know, them got to the Monday event, and from it played, they said the selector don't return the CD. Selector pass on the CD to a CD man. CD man copy that, that reach a bootleg. Gone. By the following day, the whole world of it, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what I'm saying it's like people might wonder how certain things come together it come together nice it come together generically it was a good vibe but if it had come together according to the plan of the producer mm-hmm. it would have been an entirely different segment and settings it was still one of the biggest songs for that quarter mm-hmm. you know what I mean I counted me and my team counted over 16 shows that Monty Killambini man headline titled Legendary or The Return of the Legendary R. You know what I mean? Got you. Um, I, you know, I've personally been able to license that song for usage a couple times. Mm. I actually own the master for the entire song, the only Monty Killambini man collaboration. The lyrics mm. and the music. Mm-hmm. You know? So it, yeah, it, it went. It, it was good, bro. I mean, as I say, you know, I've I've just been steadily working, and just you know, my 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 effect is all over the place. If you look, I've been doing my little work. I'm putting in my thing, my, my, my hustle in all different corners from all angles, you know. So mm-hmm. that was one thing that I was that was a real milestone. That you know, that really proved to me that boy, I come like me really did make for the inner music because of all the producers. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. My humility. My respect, in my work ethic, and my determination not to die out in this music thing, and brother, is what really, you know, kept me going. And what I felt like those artists are, and, you know, what I mean, you really have to be a special person to get two men when I'm good with one, one that for come record, you know. Mm-hmm. So, Sister Master said that to me. She's like, Yo, Esco, you know, don't take yourself light in music and take this as something that, you know, you should build on. And, keep moving and at that moment she happily announced to me that um her little home studio <laughs> get too small for my operation so we need to take a time <laughs> we need to take a time and you know get with thing going on to our next level because you know we're really doing good now but the fear yard can't manage the crowd <laughs> i got did you guys actually do uh visuals for legendary we were in, we were trying we were shooting a documentary behind the scenes. Um, we were trying to organize a tour, and we we're going to use the tour and the tour footage in addition to you know performance scenes to make the video. Mm-hmm. But lo and behold, it's like the money we kill and beat them. They just start make from the show. The money just took them on a different s- stretch. Shows just started coming in left, right, and center. And at that time, Killer them had um, visa issues, so mm. we couldn't get the tour overseas. At that time, it's like the, the Caribbean venues and stuff, it was kind of short notice to get them going on. And there were like places like Trinidad was telling us, say, yo, a soca time, you know, kind of sun kind of dropped down to the close of the year. Mm-hmm. So that's going into the January, February is definitely... Yeah, right through the Christmas, go right through. You know, Sting that year was born to be the legendary. Everything was born to be the legendary that year, you know what I mean? And to be honest with you, that one was really for the fans. In other words, I didn't make any great sum of money off of that, my bro. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That was just something that I, I give thanks for, and I'll still do it again the same way. It validated me in music. It made me believe in myself. You know what I mean? There's so much it did for me as a milestone 
and even Della too, and the whole starstruck thing, it was just, it was a testament that we could start something from growing up and create all over again. We can plant a tree in the, in the, in the soil and really watch it grow to be something fruitful. Definitely. Big, big. That right, that story itself is legendary about a legendary song. Bro, you should have been here tonight. You think, well, yeah, dog, all right. Furthermore, it was the tensest moment for the first 10 minutes of the studio session. Mm -hmm. It was tense as fuck. Because, you know, killer style already. Killer just roll up one away. Mm -hmm. Him don't tell him coming, he's just, yo, you did it, open the gate. Then he steps out by himself. Mm -hmm. Him come around, him don't want nobody know about it, wear it and take. Don't call Beanie until him finish. Right? I don't know who from over Beanie recognized Killer Kiar. So, we start recording the Killer part now, and Killer says to me, don't call nobody till I finish. Mm -hmm. By the time we step out of the studio and finish, we we'll walk right into Beanie, Entourage, mm -hmm. everything. You understand? Because you don't know. He must have come across and thing. And even though, you know, it's, it's weird, bro. Even though all you know, being a kid and these things we hear, you know, I want to tell you, say it's like there's a underlying kind of deep love and respect between the entourages and between everything. It's like. Everybody just want to come there and be in the presence mm -hmm. of Killer. And when him and Bean did they fit, they wanted to just see what this power was like. Because Matthew said, this is the first time the man them hang out at no studio in a years. See? And mm -hmm. in a sister Marcia also, no violation can go on. Mm -hmm. You see me? Because a couple of my dog them there and a couple of fear. Mm -hmm family member them where you can't you can't touch a leaf in the yard if you touch a leaf in the house you're in a problem so it was a it was there but then the entourage them did it with beanie and it was just killer one and it's like when we come out of the studio it was just fucking silence my g there's all kind of things there my g you know what i mean and then it's like killer now just walk right in between of everybody and just light up a big spliff with him glasses on and him just not saying nothing. And me just did a freeze car. But then I said, Jesus God just met this go right. <laughs> and then Beanie just did it with a big smile on him face. And the whole of the entourage serious. So killer did a serious spliff in the mouth. <laughs> Beanie just a look around and a smile. The entourage serious. Esco freeze. Then I didn't know and I wonder. I stand up in a little corner with theme thing and I say, yo, Jano, you know? Anything or anything. We don't know. We just hope it's happy peaceful. And there's about five minutes of silence. Beanie pour wine. Start sip the wine. Still silence in a brother. You know my silence is my dog. So imagine how it tense. Mm -hmm. Me no want to talk, no man no want to talk. <laughs> yeah. Then be to take a sip of the wine and say. Kila, you can go and see us up your face, you know. I bust me, bust back again, you know. Come Esco, come to record. <laughs> 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 yeah, bro, a history of the making, brother. You have to Is one of the most legendary things I've ever heard. You understand, bro? You don't know if man I got pop off gun. You don't know what. You know, as a killer, them just a born a spliff, and everybody in a mystery because it's like, okay, this man just blow up a big spliff and don't say nothing. <laughs> no artist said nothing to nobody. Normally, the artist would be like, yo. Big up, you know, my G, you know, with they are. Nothing. No man not said nothing. It's like, you wonder if it now going to go good, car. <laughs> it look like maybe people see people who they never plan to see her. Mm -hmm. Bro, I'm being to just break the ice. You know what I mean? When I say, yo, kid, I can go and see what's up your face. You know? <laughs> I bust me, bust back. No. <laughs> you know, I'm sure one thing I'm going to do after this. Come, Esco. Come up with a record. 
Right. Man, killer the smirk. And then, you know, a man from being the entourage of a killer so much some wine too, and you know, mm -hmm. drinks poor and it take time on it. You understand? Pretty legendary. Get, it get cordial now and then. You know, where it really get good now, bro, is when because that to me at that moment, I thought that was like one of my first moments actually witnessing mm -hmm. both people working together like come and go like one man has to change this and the next man has to change that and mm -hmm. kid has to no beanie the way you do it first me like it man mm -hmm. you know what i say and it's like it turned into that bro and it's like you, you know tristan did everybody did it and it's like be a serious man did it dog and it was just still a good vibe Everybody was just giving them, you know, it was just a joy to see and from there. So that's why I never feel no way, dog, is that the song that I just play the night. It was the power of no, my brother. Mm -hmm. Like Eckhart told he said, it's the power of no, brother, you know. And it just happened for this flow and it just worked that way. But it was a crazy night, bro. And every, the, the two men them drive, go to the party, them, them see him, you know what I mean? I had to stay and mix and <laughs> we never get forgot. Uh, to stay and fix this and fix that and make sure you know everything ready and start get try to get a artwork and start get a, all of that went in vain still matter so many got the blood clad party and go all a vibe with them and them but then they also do a portion of dub plate that night them a G. So you know I had to stay in and just do the work. Mm -hmm. Crazy, crazy. But that's how it happened, bro. Epic, epic, epic story. Two more artists I wanna ask who you work with before we get into King of Kingston album. Mm. One would be I Octane and Sean Paul. You could take it whichever direction you want to take it. Yeah, well, Sean Paul, you know, from Sean Paul, I've been a cut Sean Paul dub from us in a khaki. Sean Paul, I'm give you support from the days, as I told you in the earlier podcast. Mm -hmm. And my sound system days started in a song called Dirty Dozen, which was um, Kid Corrupt, Little Brother, and a couple more men that round Sean Paul, them and thing that was for them sound. And we were the sound of Dirty Cup, basically. Which yeah. was Sean Paul them, and the cronies, the group. Mm -hmm. So from them time, they're Maggie with strength and we have the dub plate them and stuff, man. And Sean has just been totally supportive on the journey right through, bro. It's like I've been working with them from jump, mm -hmm. from day one. They've been supporting us when we just come in. When we turn producers, them support us. When we turn selectors, uh, I mean, when we became artists, to them support us too. That's why, you know what I mean? See Sean and left side doing songs from. It's, it's all love we've been pairing. We expect that. And, you know, me happy to see that too. I mean, Sean give me strength too, bro. Nobody, you know what I mean? Nobody now look sideways when I'm when going to eat or do him food or do him or do my You know, so it's like I've worked with Sean in a couple, a, a couple private situations. We've worked on his album and situations like that. I've just been in writing sessions, just throwing lines, bro. Not wanting any credit, not wanting no publishing, just to know that, you know, my daddy has support the bros. We play basketball together, my G, you know, a reason I know his family, his 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 wife, you know, she's a <clears throat> she's a certified um education I don't know what you call that, educational specialist, she's a certified teacher. So she okay. taught my daughter and my sister. You know, from it's just a one big family movement and linkage from them time. The Halloween music we're doing separate things. It's like okay, that's the world G, that's the world ambassador, that's Sean, but it's like we're still happy for him where we can work together, work together. You know, where we can write together, write together, we, we, you know what I mean? And um, <clears throat> on my actual, I'm signed to one another in Europe now. Um, and on my album that's coming out, mm -hmm. not as an artist, but as a DJ and producer, like Major Laser style. Got you. Um, so on my artist that's coming out, I have Sean, so Sean Paul. So I'll be working with him for quite a while, bro. And it's like, you know, it's not just about work. It's, we're like industry colleagues, friends. Geez, like so in, most of the times we see up we, we link up is not even about music, bro. We had chat all <laughs> kind of thing and just hang out and then cut. You know what I mean? It's like that. It's like don't care how successful he is, he's still the same person to us. He's still reason the same way. So it's like you don't even you don't even feel like yo, this is the million dollar man sitting in front of you. you don't even you don't feel compelled to ask for records, you don't feel like you more just cherish the fact that we're all alive and we're still here. You know, you know if you want something you can get it. So it's like we just hang out, bro. For real. Crazy. And even I it's have It's crazy for you because it's like this man can't walk enough. This man can't walk in a foreign. This man has to walk with security. 
Yeah, I say I'm our brother that and things. So we just give him the respect and the love that he deserves. And just know, say, I will see him come back and treat me like bro, same way, bro. We'll just chop it up. But you can look for a cup of Sean Paul coming out on this upcoming album. I won't tell you in collaboration with who, but it's going to be big. Yeah. Big, big, big. I okay, now, how did you guys connect? Octane bought me my first pair of shin guards in New York at, 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 the, at the Irish Jam football um, <laughs> football game, bro. So, you know, mm-hmm. um, left side don't really play football like that. So when we were hot, I took the opportunity to go to the Roy Wilkins yearly football mm-hmm. um, showcase thing. You know what I mean? Where the artists, them usually go and perform and play ball in front of the people. So I went one year, uh, Octane them and all of the money was there and stuff. And... Um, I did have a woman in the room with me on that trip and you know I ended up missing the mall trips and all of the entourage mall trips. So I didn't have any gears to go to the ball field. <clears throat> and when we were leaving for the match now, you know, I get my gears from Earl and my thing and I said, Earl, I promise I'll sit out in a car and I'm something and acting. I said, You my DJ man, I mean sit out, I just read there, you know, acting in them fresh him just have a one song them time there, you know. So it's like that was just so, you know supportive and thing and you know, there they are reason the whole time on the bus and them is like man say real now play him I say yo no watch nothing and him call a man and then tell a man say yo go back up get a shin guard and him say go buy a shin guard and a boots and you get me I say mm-hmm. from this you know me and the dog come bridging you now and you don't know him walk the stage today and, and, and I ride Wilkins and him you know I'm saying me do my little part of the song there man but I said I get tough man I want to hear it and things keep a link and so forth and so I met him there, we all have vibe in New York and to be honest with you, I never really saw him back again till after the group split. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like way after, you know. And at that moment, I saw, I saw him where I turned over hotel, me and Justus them and he came to sing at something private for Justus and that's where we started talking and I was like, DJ, from them time there, you know what I mean? You show me strength in Amiji and you're on your career path now. We're growing our music and you know, me know me can add to your legacy, so we'll link up and so forth and so on. And eventually, over time, you know, me, me and Quick cook them. And I'm just gonna circle him, cause you know, me and cook them good too at the same time. So, mm-hmm. you know, circle acting and start developing the link. And it came down to Starstruck now, which was at Dermore Road, same road as Zip at the time where me and Della, the man, the whole gang was. And mm-hmm. from this, I know, you know, we had a big yard like Stone Love. Big yeah, man can park them car and high and we still keep the studio box very gully. You hear me? I say? My studio them always just have that gully feel from so we stay street connected. We still feel like we're just a boss, you know? So you need that. Yeah, so you know you like that vibe and stuff. So from there I'm just started coming around, bro. And you know, we open up our studio to the talented people and the artists who not charge money. We just make a man who have the talent and deserve to be used in a studio, just use studio, you know? For sure. And the dog was really good to us. We, we, we earned paper, you know, he's a man who give me enough advice to record songs to me. He's one of the artists that I have to just be, you know, forever grateful to. Him, Wayne Marshall, Bounty Killer, and, 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 and others that I'll name as we go along for more. Just people where we just have to stay constantly grateful for because them just come in and lend them strength and they're also receive you know the strength that i was trying to give the impact and and the, and the camaraderie me i try to create and was open to that and i saw the goodness in that you know the goodness in the spirit and my vibe and my character when all of people was trying to act like who esco is this or esco is yeah, i must esco the problem man cause see mm. Ray you understand so those people are really who help validate me and validate my goodness and you know i appreciate that definitely big 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 there you brought him up a couple of times we spoke about the legendary and stuff i know as a producer right now you're working closely with killer on this album that everybody's talking about king of yeah yeah what could you what can you tell us about what you're doing on this album right now or what's going on bro what i can say is it's like a dream come true Mm -hmm. you know what i mean um when i think back to being a fan and watching Bounty Killer on stage, like I was at Peppers, I don't know if any Jamaican remember Peppers and what we might talk about, but I was at Peppers the first time Bounty Killer come up town. I climbed up in a tree to make sure I had a good view of the stage show. You understand? That was the first time Killer performed in an uptown venue. You know what I mean? Because you know them times that we have teeny bopper, so 
teeth, we have to teeth out for good to show there, and you could have never gone nowhere else but right there. So, mm-hmm. yeah, we go half a tree. You see? So, it's like from them time till now, bro, to become a selector was getting dubs to become a producer who started to produce now and become an artist who's perform on stage alongside the artist now and then now to be working on like this project like bro it's 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 amazing it's amazing and you know i will say this that at first when i got on board with the album i was looking at it and i was like yo what is it going to be like you know what i mean what is it going to be like and how are we going to really top what's been done before and how are we going to also ingratiate ourselves with this new new world and musical diaspora and stuff like that fam and i mean i like bro we did some good fucking work there's a lot of love on the album there's a lot of collaboration there's a lot of mutual respect there's a lot of good music a lot of good producers there's a lot of true dancer there's a lot of authentic delivery you know what i mean there are some crossover records there is some hardcore dancehall records. Mm-hmm. There are some super collaborations. There is some solid reggae. Bro, because let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. There. I'm fam, man. Let me tell you this. And this is one of the reasons why, you know, after, I take my hat off the killer too. But at the same time, it's like, <clears throat> we're similar in this regard, fam. It's like, when we are do something, there's a whole heap of pride back at it. Mm-hmm. There's a whole heap of belief. So, even if the artist is in his own zone of believing, oh, yeah, man, he's the artist and he's that, which is all good, there is a next man side of him like me. So, one of the fans, them, for no say. And then a joke album between theme competitive spirit and determination and my competitive spirit and determination and then the pride where we have me being a Leo. You understand? It's like effort going at my bro. Time going at, you know what I mean? Collaborations from, you know what I mean? Like even me being a man who most of the, the, the album run through my studio fam. We don't hold any harden on any producers. It was all unity. We take anybody track if they want it mix. We mix it. My engineer take Tronic, it mix them. If, if, you know what I mean? If, if we send back vocals to people, it was just all love and unity. And when we send the tech hats off the killer, because at the end of the day, with this platform as one of the bigger artists and one of the more commanding artists in dancehall, it really forced the genre to unify and collaborate. It really forced this album, King of Kingston, is really a statement. And it's something we're going discuss at the same time. It's a statement of not only how to do good dancehall albums mm-hmm. is how to stay true to your craft. It's also how to enrich your genre. And enriching your genre should mean all hands on deck mm-hmm. from the whole genre when certain projects are good and when collaborations need to happen between the, the industry's best there should be no holdout against them thing then. No egos, no no nothing. We're working no, for the betterment so, of the music. Yes, sir. you know that, bro. And that's mm-hmm. he really used them clout mm-hmm. to fight for that. And then now you had a neutral man like me now who no man can say them and Esco have no problem. My Esco do have no problem with no man. Mm-hmm. Them might can have a problem, but they have them problem over the SMG. As far as it concerns on music, we do not politics. Mm-hmm. So with us collaborating on that, bro, you have somebody who is totally open, who know of it, who is not necessarily as shaded as killer, who know to speak and deal with everybody. Is it messy? And and we also develop good relationships through this album, G like me and not nice them. We get to hang out in studio a little bit more, bulby. You know what I'm saying? We get to have conversations with the elder. You're like, bro, this album was just it's so much. It was it was college and school in our one. It's history. It's unity. It's good music. It's classics. A whole heap of things, bro. I've been in sessions with Big Youth. I've been in sessions with King Jamis. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? See the King and Mix live. Talk to... You know what I mean? We've been around Uncle Berries. We've been around, You know what I mean? 
go up a chronic them, sit with the J, feel him vibes, watch his message, walk around with the show mic and watch the dog and sing him thing and on Bill Fee vibes have reasons, reasons and reasonings upon top of reasons in reasons in. <laughs> Yo, bro, I tell you. I'm so excited, it's like my speech has slur, brother. It's, 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 it's something to look forward to. And I mean, the people should really look on this as a collector's item. You can't look on this as a regular album where, oh, yo, you know, this is a collector's item. This is like, you know, one of our greatest dancer stars of this generation, of this decade, of these decades. And it's more of a collector's item album. It's not to be something where you have a you know, we just, we just love and revere it for what it is. You know, you're not going to pitch it against this man or pitch it against that man on radar. This is encouraging a loving dance hall. You understand? And uh, uh, encouraging a way in which we should operate moving forward. Mm -hmm. This is really one of these moments where you could say this was done for the culture. You understand? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Totally. And it features uh, almost the whole culture. Because <laughs> <laughs> he just released the track, the track list a couple of days ago. You know, right. I mean? when you've seen everything on it, it's like, okay, I, I see what's going on here. You know? I mean? Yeah, when you feel like you're responsible for about maybe half of it, you know, you really feel special and you really feel honored and you really feel like, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, you're at the NBA Finals, you know what I mean? You're, you're not only playing ball, but you're at the Finals, fam. You get me, I say? You know, just step on the ball field. You ain't at the final, you ain't at the big league. You know what I say, my G? It's like, shout out to Khalid and everything, the fam. It's like, crazy overseas engineers hitting my email with files, fam. I've made so many links and connects. I'm getting files from DJ Khalid and them producers. We are sending back things to them. You know me, I say overseas producer, big up Chamba, them man. You know me, I say big up all. I've been in sessions with Junior Gang, fam. Mm. Baby G, all in one session, Blink Dog. You know, I talk about greats in uh, tens of greats, dozens of greats gathers in a one room, my G. You know me, I say history. History, fam. It was a joy to make. It was a joy to make from the one away studio sessions at 3 a.m. with just me and Killer and Tronic. To the big session down at Tough Gang with all are we to a little session a session on a mixing lab with the jet with the elder artists them and bro safari them passed through and some of the sessions them it's been oh you know, bro it's just been it's been epic it's been epic and enjoyable that's all I can say it's been epic and enjoyable bro it seems like it's really hard to put this situation into words you understand Cause every word you try to put in it still doesn't seem like it's big enough for what <laughs> this project really really represents you know what i mean yeah fam i mean and I, i'll say i'm honored to be a part of it bro it's just you know i'm i'm just keep trying to add stripes to my musical journey mm -hmm. um you know and i just still here just trying to give the fans some good music mm -hmm. definitely talking about good music you just said you have a new album coming up. Talk to us about the album. Okay, so the album now um, is okay. So I've separated my career, my career is a bit. So mm -hmm. my dancehall career as a dancehall artist and producer mm -hmm. is separate. I have assigned in that regard. What I have signed as is, as, you know, I used to be a former selector, so I'm signed now as a selector mm -hmm. and a producer. This means I'll be making fusion music, music fused with international genres and dancehall reggae. Mm -hmm. And then I'll be going out into the international market on stage and playing and performing. Okay. So I signed that deal um, early this year, or maybe even, yeah, like maybe late last year or early this year. Mm -hmm. um, I signed on with another partner. <laughs> so, you understand? I guess mm. people can understand that I really don't have any hard feelings that much against partnership. Partnership is necessary. Collaboration is necessary. Mm -hmm. I enjoy it. I feel like no man is an island, and I feel like we, together we can be stronger. You know what I mean? It sounds corny. <laughs> you seem like a real team player, though. That's like in your heart of hearts, you like to play on a team. 
I do. And I played team sports all my life, man. I played national soccer. I played football for Real Mona. I played basketball for Campion brought home their only championship. And then I played national basketball for them. Then I went on to play ball at LSU for a time. I just loved it. I was bred on team sports too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Coaches made me into what I am. Like hard, hard, tough love. You know what I say? Buckle feel, losses. You know what I mean? So it's like I took that over into my music career. Like I, I somewhat play, I somewhat handle music like an NBA player or an NFL player would handle being in a franchise from his life. Mm -hmm. You know, the whole physical part of the undertaking, you know, the whole mental game, the whole understanding that it's a long road, it's, it's, it's a season, it's a career. You know what I mean? Taking care of your body and your mind, mm -hmm. you know? collaborating with new people new trainers to keep your thing fresh so you know that's that's kind of been my mo bro and it has brought me to this this deal um you know and i've tried with a lot of artists and i've tried with a lot of people around me fam and it's just like time to try it myself now but at the same time i'm still not opposed to getting into a partnership so i'm in a partnership with icon music um, is this popular guy, DJ slash artist. He's similar to me, he produces as well. He's like me in his country, he's from Finland. Mm -hmm. So we partnered on this deal and, you know, we formed a group called Northern Lights. Um, yeah, and with that we built, um, we have two studio blocks here in Jamaica. We built a, a studio, some studios around in the, in the Waterloo area. We have um, four studio rooms in the house. It's like an Airbnb version of Big Yard. Okay. So we have four studios there, and then I have another private block where I do like the one away work and with like killer and you know, private people who just like to come to the studio with their people alone. With four studios on the block, you can't guarantee who's gonna be there. So I have a one away place now, you know, where we host like some of the bigger artists who like private privacy, you know, the Jesse Ryan, the Sassin, them, the Bunty Killer, them, you know, Silk Boss and you know, a couple of the younger artists. It's like where I do most of the work with the younger artists who are coming out. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and I water them and all of them youth, the Diani and, you know what I'm saying? Shaka and all of them youth there. Enough of the young youth, then, you know, open up a studio to all the while too and things. So that's where I have that. And then I have the international fusion studio where do right writing camps and stuff for the things. So I um, got a smile for me, bro. And I mean, you know, it, things have, I continue to for, for stay humble and at the same time stay hungry. Definitely agree with that because you seem so multifaceted, so multifaceted where producer, artist, selector, actor, radio presenter. It's like you're always doing something, but it seems like throughout your career, where you got your biggest break was as when you were in the group, the left side and Esco, when you guys did those songs, and as a producer, that seems to be where you think there. With even you as an mm -hmm. artist now, I know you came out hardcore, but you even have some newer songs where you're given more of a singing style. You understand? So it seems like you're still molding your artist style of who Esco is. Yeah, I, I would agree with you, fam. And, and, you know, I would say this, that, I mean, I encourage people to be multifaceted, but at the same time, you know, focus mm -hmm. is necessary. And I think that's maybe one slight area which I could probably uh, take accountability and say, because I'm so diverse and I try to be so broad, my artistry doesn't get undivided focus. Mm -hmm. So it has taken me, you know, a longer time or it has taken me some time to, to explore my sound. And, you know, I've grown... My vocal has grown, my lyrics, you know what I mean? I test it with other artists. I hold it for artists and my right and people don't know and they act. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I know that I've tested myself lyrically and stuff. So I've been experimenting with my vocal tones and different things, bro. I've also gotten a lot closer to reggae mm -hmm. and live music. So, I mean, to the audience, I would say, um, pick one. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like I'm going to be putting out a lot of stuff. Um, I'm just going to stay true to who I am and what I feel and what I feel to do. And I mean, I'm a hustler, I'm a producer, I'm a businessman, I'm an athlete. As you say, I'm an actor, I'm a radio presenter. I have all these different energies wrapped up and all these different things to focus on at the same time. And all these, like, you know, all these have also made me more confident in being multifaceted. Like, I want to do everything that I can do. Mm -hmm. So... I would say, you know, you, there's a lot of new music coming out in the year, 
in the upcoming year, jugglings, singles, mm-hmm. collabs, in addition to work on other people's albums. So, I mean, they may not recognize me when I'm singing. They may hear me and don't know it's me. Mm-hmm. But I'll just say, you know, look forward to definite growth and a more polished, cleaner sound. You know what I mean? And I feel like the whole Shaka addition to my name was for this reason that I intend, you know, my intention is as I continue to flow through music to be a shock to the industry, to the media, to the fans. When the collective comes together and people realize, fuck, what a so much thing is going to Mm-hmm. Is a shock for true, <laughs> but that's, that's why I wanted to have. Yeah, that's, that's why I wanted to have this true, conversation, bro. because I don't think a lot of people really realize or even understand the amount of stuff you've done in this business, what you're responsible for, and stuff. I said, Nah, man, I have to talk to Esco. You understand? Yeah, I appreciate you, bro. And I mean, it, it's a, it's surprising to me to farm because I mean. When you when you when you really got your, your head down and you you're running you're sprinting the first fifty meters of your race, you now really look up to see how much people you left behind or how much mm-hmm. how well of a race you're running. Yeah. Sometimes when you lift up your head and still running the last fifty of the race, you still not understand how good you're doing till you cross the finish line and say, Are you first? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like sometimes even these conversations, bro, it's like you know, I end up here. I'm people probably, probably I say, yo, it's got chat so much because me. <laughs> nah, I'm here myself, bro. like recounting my own journey, and it's like, damn, <laughs> I so much thing, man. Did I hustle and I do for make it, bro? And it's like, mm-hmm. you know, I feel proud at the same time, and I feel almost a little bit in awe myself. I'm just like, damn, I'm yo. Yeah. That's Music is a, you know, it's a journey, fam, man. You know, <laughs> people who understand say the heights of great men not attained by a sudden flight. Mm-hmm. Took a lot of work. Last one I have for you because this conversation has been so crazy. You've had this career from you were selecting, playing sound, producer, group, everything. Radio. When would you say all of that, acted, all of that? When would you say has been the highest point in your career and when has been the lowest point in your career thus far? I mean, the lowest point of my career from would be That moment when I was away and I realized after doing so much music and being good to so much people, mm-hmm. I was away from and I had $2 in my bank account. Yeah, I had songs out. Yeah, I had checks that were probably going to be coming. But at that point, I realized, fuck, I can eat a use this as fuel hmm. or really just look at myself as a failure and at the time I was walking over bridging and just to stay close to the studio I'd sleep on the floor hmm. yeah I'd be crypt to go to me you know what I mean I'm not trying to make it look like men up you know what I mean I'm not trying to look at sympathy at the same time I'm telling people about my lowest moment in truth in life mm-hmm. and I just realized from that at the end of the day at that point as many people as I, I knew and as many people as I served and been there for couldn't call none of them <clears throat> and who I could call I didn't want to call didn't want to call any family. I didn't want to lay my burdens on anybody. Mm-hmm. And in that low moment, fam, it's like I was there feeling sad and down and like about to go to tears. And it's like the competitive side of me say, yo, hmm. the fuck do you, my youth? You know how much people there in Jamaica want their foreign? 
<laughs> Yo, I swear to you, bro, my, the voice in my head was just so plain, and it was it was just a simple counting of blessings. Mm. It was like in your lowest moment, my voice never said to me some cliche thing. It was just like, yo, pull yourself together. Yeah, they are foreign. Mm-hmm. It can't be that bad. Where there's life, there's hope, where there's opportunity. You get what I said? There is chance. Chance for everybody prepared, dog. Get your thing prepared. Just keep your thing going. Mm-hmm. Remember, and then from there, I start to check up reality. I'm like, remember, okay, there's things there, there's things here, there's things there. And you know what, really? I need to really, matter of fact, fuck was i about to be defeated just now all right watch this mm. you understand and from there like i really in that moment from like in that moment in that moment in that moment mm-hmm. i just made a decision to myself and i was like yo you wanna you're already in the league you know we are gonna drop out you're gonna be one of those players that you know, play because you know as a basketball player, it's like NBA is a very synonymous my thing. <laughs> That's like you're gonna be one of those players that people hear about in the league, and then all of a sudden just don't hear about them. Mm. You know, go retire. You know, go play long so people can say mm-hmm. the dog has been in the game for a while and did it. Mm-hmm. You come too far for that, bro. Come too far for that. So from this, bro, I just decided to myself that, yo, you know what, regardless of what, now I'm staying in the league, I'm going to play ball. I'm going to just play ball, dog. I'm going to just know, say, all right, then. I'm going to continue for self-improve. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We know technology changing. I'm going to keep changing with that. I humble myself. I'm go some man foot. I'm learn. You know what I'm call center job. I use and I buy two software. Get the thing going. You know, mess bro, I rise from that. But that moment, bro, when I looked and I was like, you know, cause the night there, it was in the night, bro, and I was, I'm done work and we want to buy some food. I'm gonna go some blue man flip by the ATM. I'm gonna check it out. Two dollar, man. I said, bum buckler. I can't even buy nothing. Like, I mean, take out the two dollar and buy a two dollar burger, <laughs> a two dollar <laughs> meal up at McDonald's. Cause McDonald's they have some two dollar meal or Burger King one time. <laughs> Somebody rise the two dollar same way and just go buy a meal. But when we go home now, I realize that Jano dog, I me this. Yeah. Nobody not there, no more group, no more career, no more nothing. No more raise like people nearly draw you in a car, you nearly mash up, you lick in your face, you have stitches, ray, beer thing, and you did there, and you say, Yo, you never know the bag of food. You just have the work that you put in on you and your character and your health and your strength. Mm-hmm. You see me, bro? And that's this song is like, it took me to a, a, a slight dark place for like a few minutes and thank god for god and thank god for my conscience and thank god for my strength and the people who whoever influenced me through my life my family friends and and, and, and influences is like myself drape up myself quick mm-hmm. you see me bro so that was my lowest moment and um my highest moment now mm-hmm. yeah that's when i'm smoking that weed fam you know <laughs> not even it's like my highest moment from the way i look at life bro my highest moment is no, I yet to come. My highest moment is ever present. As long as I'm alive, able to do music, I'm healthy, able to provide for my family, fam. It's like that's the highest of it for me. I mean, what I achieve, of course, accolades, you know, doing big songs and stuff, that's all a spike for the moment. But you know, the greater goal is for me to endure my G. It's to be a legend in night, to be a veteran, is to grow to inspire people who come after me, to make it here, say, yo, Esco them did put on them youth, yeah. Esco them do these big platforms, you know, bro, I'm still after Grammy, I'm still after um, all these awards and plaques, so it's like, I couldn't even say my highest moment is gone yet, mm-hmm. and I can't say it's to come, I feel like as long as I'm here doing it, is my highest moment. I knew without doubt, that's what you were going to say without a doubt, because I understand <laughs> how your mind, no, for real, how your mind works and the gratitude you have, especially for going through something so dark where, listen, you're on top of the world. You guys have all these songs to you. You're down in a call center, Brad Dean. A lot of people don't really understand that. So then your gratitude to just be sitting here right yeah. now doing what you've done. That's why you would say right now is your highest point, and I 100% understand what you mean. 
Yeah, man, my fam, man, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate the opportunity for me to share all of this, bro, because, I mean, even now, recollecting all this, it gives me a, a different energy and a strength now. Probably my go studio right after this, to know, with, you know what I mean, with this energy, you know what I mean, this level of belief and recollecting and, you know, my purpose and what I've been able to do in music, however small, however big. It's like I, I'm fully appreciative, fam. I am, truly. <laughs> Definitely. Leave leave some social media contacts so if the people that want to check out with you, link up with you, so they could see what the Shocker is doing. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, you know, it's at Esco the Shaka at E S C O D A S H O C K E R. Shock them, you know it go. Um and you can Google me. I mean, I, that's my, my handle is pretty much the same right across the board. Um, you know, I, I, I run a makeup store for the ladies. You can check that out at EC Makeup Bar. You know what I mean? <laughs> we also have a nail bar and a brow bar there. Um, you know, um, I'm still at it, fam. Um, I'm still at it. You know, my music is all over. You know, distributed by all different platforms. I'm with Zojak. I'm with Happiness. I'm with, you know, VP. I'm with everybody. People can just keep looking out for great music. You might not pick up that it's me in the beginning. The rhythm, the beat, the song. But you know, Esco, we're still there. We've been at work and still at work. And at the end of the day, fam, you know, it's like we're keeping it fresh, we're keeping it young. Just typing that at Esco the Shaka. You know what I mean? Just keep your eyes and your ears open next year. You must hear and see. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Listen, Esco, this conversation, bruh, your level of two things, your level of honesty and your level of recollection has been freaking amazing. Legendary. That's the word we're going to use for this one here. Legendary. You understand? Yeah, man, my fam. Yeah, man, my fam. I appreciate it. And it's like, to all the folks out there, you know what I mean? Big it up, big one up, and big up all the foreigners them out there, big up all the artists, them, all the selector them. You know what I mean? All the multi-talented people, all the multifaceted people out there, fam. It's like, keep doing what you're doing, dog. Create that lane. You know what I mean? The borders are pushed by the unreasonable people. You can't be reasonable in all situation sometimes you gotta be unreasonable people now gonna think you can do it because them can't do it mm -hmm. but you know me i say you know i pride myself on just being me and the versatile me the multifaceted me the the, the the interested me the curious me the man who just always wants to keep growing and building and unifying and doing so i just encourage the fans the artists them everybody just do the same man just be you create your lane and push to the fullest Big boss. Yeah, man, bro. Thank Appreciate you so hear that. much. Definitely. Let me give you an outro and get you on here. All right? Yeah, man, my fam. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Muscle, and this has been another Two Line Music Hut Entertainment Report podcast, and we are out. This podcast is brought to you by www.twolinedmusichut.com. <laughs>